All right, hi there. Uh, today we're going to look at vertical exaggeration. This is a skill that I often find students uh, have a real problem with. They just get in their head around it. Um, but as soon as they start to understand, I guess, how it's used and why it's used, it's, um, it's something that then they find a lot easier to, uh, to understand. So, look, I'm going to try and provide you with a really simple um, uh, example of how and why vertical exaggeration is used and calculated. Oh, well, let's start um, by sort of working out, well, what is it and when is it used? Um, when we construct a cross-section, uh, we often have to change um, one of the scales. Generally, it's going to be the vertical scale to be able to show um, more variation in a landscape. Basically, vertical exaggeration is just a number that tells us how much we have changed the vertical scale or stretched it to show that variation in the landscape. Now, the theory I've taken, uh, I've just taken this from one of the textbooks, and it's pretty uh, stand. It's a pretty standard textbook, and it goes through how you calculate vertical exaggeration. Now, the formula um, is important, and you should. You know, you need to know that. The thing that I often find students get really, really struggle with is, is when they get down to this section here and you start talking about, um, you know, putting the numerator and the denominator in the same measurements and then putting them over a hundred, uh, putting them over a hundred, inverting them, and then coming to the num coming to your VE. I can understand how students, you know, find this confusing. And so what I always say is try and think about your map and your cross-section in real life terms. Try and, you know, with geography, you should see features, the features that we're mapping, that we're calculating, exist in the world. So they should, your numbers and your, and your outcomes should exist in the world. And I would suggest that the way you work out things like vertical exaggeration and gradient is to try and take a more common sense approach and a real world approach to it. So those of you that have seen my cross-section video uh, will notice that I'm using the same map. You can see I've constructed the cross-section down here and I'm going to use this map um, to calculate the vertical exaggeration. Cross-section and vertical exaggeration often go hand in hand and students are asked to calculate. The first thing that you'll, you'll realise if you remember from the formula, we need to know uh, in order to calculate vertical exaggeration, we need um, the vertical scale and we need the horizontal scale. So the first thing that we work at is the horizontal. The horizontal scale is always going to be given to us on a map. And in this instance here, you can see that I've got my ruler here and one kilometre, uh, let me, I'll get rid of this. One kilometre here equals two and a half centimetres. So on this one here, the horizontal scale is one one kilometre equals 2.5 centimetres. We'll need to simplify that and you'll see on the next slide I have. So I've done that here. My one centimetre here, and I'll go to red. One centimetre here equals, oh, sorry, 2.5 centimetres here equals one kilometre. Uh, we really want to get that down to a one centimetre equals because that's, the, uh, that's what we're going to be using uh, for the vertical scale. So. What we do, we get the 1,000, one, one kilometre equals 1,000 metres. We divide it by the 2.5, which is the 2.5 centimetres, and it's going to give us 400. So therefore, one centimetre here on our horizontal scale equals 400 metres. We now then come down to the vertical scale. The vertical scale is the scale that is going to change. It's a scale that we're going to, uh, we're going to construct. On this map here, on the, where I've constructed the cross-section, you can see here's one... There's two, three, four on my ruler. So you can see here, one centimetre here equals 100 metres, and I've written it up here. That's my vertical scale. I've chosen that scale because I felt it was appropriate for the cross-section I was constructing. It could have been different, though. OK, once I've got that, I've got my vertical exaggeration formula, vertical scale over horizontal scale. So one centimetre equals 100 metres, over one centimetre equals 400 metres. I've got to make sure the 
probably the biggest area where people have problems now is not having the same units of measurement where you've got metres and kilometres. Always ensure that you're running, that you're calculating in metres. Basically, the way we want to be able to tell or give our answer is to say how much the vertical scale has been changed. So what I would say to you is you... Instead of, uh, in, in a lot of the textbooks, you get the way of uh, working out is by inverting the denominator, multiplying, and this is where I often find students make a mistake. What I would be suggesting is, in order to come to uh, a, an, an answer that's meaningful, is you take, uh, you take your vertical scale and divide it by itself. So 100 by 100 will give you 1. If you then do that to your horizontal scale, 400 by 1, that will give you effectively your vertical exaggeration. Now, it's going to, tell you, it's going to give you an answer of 4. Uh, what that tells you, that tells you that the vertical scale has been exaggerated 4 times on top of the horizontal scale. I'll show you a few other, I've, I've done this cross section three times um, with different vertical scales, so it will start to make a bit more sense now. So here are my three, uh, my three cross sections. This is the one we've just looked at and calculated that that vertical scale here is four times larger or four times exaggerated than the horizontal scale. I've now got number two and number three. Both of those have different vertical scales, and so the application of vertical exaggeration should be evident now. This is map two. You can see here that this vertical scale is a little bit smaller. Instead of going up in units of 50, it's going up in hundreds. The horizontal scale will always stay the same. So the vertical scale here is one centimetre equals 200 metres. As I showed before, it's a, sm it's a, uh, it's a change scale. Uh, in, in a cross section, we're gonna, we're gonna create the scale ourselves if it's not been given to us. So, we use the same formula, and my vertical scale is one centimetre equals 200 metres. The horizontal scale always stays the same. The simplest way again, dividing the vertical scale by itself to give us one, and then the horizontal scale by that, uh, by that vertical scale, and that's going to give us two. Effectively, it's telling us that on this map here, or in this cross-section here, the vertical scale has only been exaggerated two times that of the horizontal scale. And because of that, we can see there's far, it's a far flatter landscape, uh, or a far flatter profile. This is the fourth map, uh, sorry, the third map. Vertical scale here, I changed again, you can see it's going up in 50s. Uh, so one centimetre equaling 50 metres. Once again, you'll, hopefully you can see that the profile is more exaggerated. The formula stays the same, vertical scale and horizontal scale. So one centimetre equals 50 metres, the horizontal scale, once again, always stays the same because we're using the same map. If I just divide the vertical scale by itself and then do it to the horizontal scale, we find that this one here is now exaggerated eight times. And hopefully you can see that there in its profile. It's a far more exaggerated profile. We can see a lot more in the, in the features of this map, of this cross section. So if you compare the three of them, I've highlighted them so they stand out. This was the map two, this is the original one, and this was the last one. But I've ordered them in their order of vertical exaggeration. A vertical exaggeration of two times, four times, and eight times. Hopefully you can see, as the vertical exaggeration increases, so does the exaggeration of the profile. Because it's this scale here that we are stretching up. Okay, I guess the final thoughts. Um, 
what you should realise or what you should try and make sure, when you're working out your vertical exaggeration, try and think to the real world. Try and picture your map as a map that's existing in the real world and that your cross-section is existing in the real world. If you end up with a number that you think is too small or too large, there's a chance that you've done some... Uh, some or you've got some problems with your calculations, go back and have a look at it. Your answer should make sense. Um, hopefully this has helped you out and in just sort of understanding what vertical exaggeration is and being able to apply it uh, in, a, in an exam or an assessment. Uh, look, I hope, yeah, hopefully yeah, that helps out.